Hello, this is Mrs. Kohler, and welcome to part one of your fourth podcast for this unit. So in this section, we're going to be talking about how your body changes DNA into proteins. So we're going to be talking about the gene to protein hypothesis. So this is transcription and translation part one. So the first question to answer is why do we have DNA in the first place? So basically humans are just big bags of protein walking around. So in order to create those proteins, we have DNA. DNA has the code that tells our bodies how to build those proteins. In turn, our bodies use those proteins to perform the functions that we need in order to stay alive. And every gene in our body codes for one specific protein. So in order to do a particular process, your body might need three or four or five proteins. That would mean that there's one gene for each protein that needs to be produced in order to do that. So as you can see in this illustration, we start with DNA. It turns into RNA, which turns into a protein, which then functions as part of our body. So how do our bodies go about making proteins? So this illustration is showing a cell, and in the cell I've simplified it, all you can really see is the nucleus with some DNA in it and the ribosomes. So our nucleus contains DNA, which contains our genetic code, so that's the purple swirlies that are there. And inside the nucleus, our DNA makes copies as RNA, and it's gonna send those copies of RNA out into the cytoplasm. Sending those copies, uh, making those copies and sending them into the cytoplasm is a process called transcription. So you can see here I have an arrow showing, an arrow going out of the nucleus. That's the RNA being copied and being sent out of the nucleus. That's transcription. Once it's moved out of the nucleus, the RNA then goes to the ribosomes. The ribosomes change that RNA into a protein and that process is called translation. So the green dots here are the ribosomes. So the DNA is copied to RNA, the RNA is sent out of the nucleus to the ribosomes, and the ribosomes are changed into a protein in a process called translation. Now, how does your body know how to build the protein? Well, that's when you come to what are called codons. Codons are three-letter DNA segments that tell your body which amino acid to use. If you remember, proteins are made of many amino acids put together. So each group of three letters tells your body how to make a particular amino acid. So scientists use a codon chart in order to help you with this, and I'm going to walk you through how to use a codon chart. There's two different codon charts here. I'm going to show you how to use the circle one, and I'm also going to teach you how to use the square one. So genes always begin with the start codon, which is AUG. So the way that you read this on the chart, we're going to go to the square one first, is you find the column that says first letter, and the first letter is A, so you find that. Second letter is U, so find those and line them up, and that shows you a square with four possibilities. And then the third letter is G, you find the G, and then you line the three up, and where all three of those letters line up, that is the amino acid that you have. That's how you're doing it on the square chart. Now I'm gonna shift over onto the circle chart. The circle chart, you just start from the center and you work outward. So if your first letter is A, you find the big A, and then connected to that A, you find the U, and then connected to that U, you find the G, and when, where all of those three spokes line up, that's your start codon, which is, also gives you the amino acid methionine. So I'm gonna give you another example. Let's say that you have the codon GAU. So on the square chart, your first letter is G, so that's the bottom row here. Your second letter is A, that's your third column, so find where those two line up. And then your third letter is U, you're gonna find that U, and where all three of those line up, you have aspartate. If you do that on the circle one, start in the center and work outward. Your first letter is G, so you find the big G, line that up with the A, and then line that A up with the U, and you get aspartic acid. Aspartic acid and aspartate are really the same thing, so you might get a slightly different name, but they're pretty similar so that you know you're getting just about the same amino acid. Now, there are some codons that have no function other than to stop your body from producing proteins. 
Those are called stop codons. So one example of a stop codon would be UAA. So if you line up the letters U, A, and A, you get the word stop. And that works on both the square and on the circle. Whenever you get a stop codon, that's where your DNA processing is going to end. No matter how many amino acids you've added, when you get to the stop codon, you're done. So when you do your worksheet and when you do your quiz and when you do your assessment, you're going to be working with these codons in order to decode them and figure out which amino acid it's going to be. Um, also in class, we're going to be doing codon bingo, where we're going to be practicing using this chart to figure out what the codons are. So you're going to get a lot more practice with this.